Documentary filmmakers and TV news crews for decades have used the two-camera interview to capture the stories of the people that they're interviewing. It's a very efficient way to get these stories on tape, and it also allows them to edit later for clarity and for the purpose of the story. But what if you break away from the framework of those two cameras and use a camera that captures everything, captures 360 degrees? When we do that, all of a sudden you can see the cameras behind us. You can see Scripps Hall. You can see everything. And the environment becomes another character in the story that you're telling. In this video, we're going to explore various ways to do interviews in 360 video and hopefully give you some ideas on how you can apply it to your filmmaking. So we are here with Anthony Zucola, project manager at the Grid Lab here at Ohio University, and we're talking more about 360 interviews. So Anthony, first tell us what happens with the VR Grid, grid program here at Ohio. Uh, well, uh, so the Game Research and Immersive Design Lab, the Grid Lab, um, you know, we work a lot with the classes and practicums and, uh, and students from all different media backgrounds where they're um, making different types of projects uh, that involve 360 video, audio, uh, VR, and uh, virtual reality and augmented reality. Excellent, excellent. And for this project, we're talking about interviewing in 360 video. And this first camera angle that we have, it's off to the side. What are the advantages for that? advantages that we have when we do that for 360 video? Uh, I think the, the one of the strongest uh, uh, components to being able to do that is, is um, you know, making someone feel like they're naturally part of the conversation, um, as opposed to sort of, uh, you know, having to look back and forth between the interviewer and the interviewee. Right. Um, you know, so, so it feels more natural. Um, you're going to get a sense of, like, again, being a part of the conversation and maybe even... Um, uh, you know, pick up a thing or two from the interview more right. so than you would if you were just, like I said, kind of bouncing back and forth between question and answer. Right. And that can happen if you set up the camera in a way that seems intuitively correct based on the way we've always done these kind of interviews by putting the camera in between the interviewer and the subject. That's right. And that's what this angle is now. Right. So right. you sort of described it, but what happens when that goes back and forth? Right. Like and I think, you know, I, I, uh, uh, I think it comes down to uh, somebody having to look back and forth between the two and, you know, right. sort of watching that tennis match or that ping pong match where they're just um, trying to take in all that information. So, you know, from the question right. and back to the answer. And, you know, it, it's not going to feel as natural. It's not going to feel uh, like you're actually part of that conversation or, or um, uh, you know, you may not pick up as much of the information that you probably would have because you're more or less more, you know, concentrating on trying to get it all in as opposed to just it not being feeling natural. Absolutely. And we were talking just a second ago about um, editing because mm -hmm. we don't have the two cameras, so it's going to be a continuous take. Um, we're not going to take out the stutters that I've had just a few minutes ago. That's right. That's do, right. Do you think that makes it feel more natural, too, in this environment of being Right. There? Because, I, well, I think people are imperfect, right? You know, especially, you know, you're going to have um, mess ups and mishaps that, you know, it, Again, that's what happens in real life. Whereas, you know, if you're talking about a, kind of a two camera setup, you know, they can cut it down to whatever they need it to be and um, um, make it look and, and, and feel a certain way. And, you know, to me, that feels more natural. So no, I would hope most other people too. I thank you for your time. We're going to sure. look at some other interview um, aspects and ways to do it and um, continue doing work here at Grid Life. Great. Thanks for talking with me. Thank Appreciate you. it. Take care, man. My name is Zul Dinarbuko, and I'm a graduate student at Ohio University. I'm taking 360-degree video production as my elective course, with the aim that I'll be able to teach this course later when I get back to my country, Indonesia. A sense of presence is a strength of 360 video, and it is important when introducing a subject. This is College Green the centerpiece of Ohio University and ranked as one of the most beautiful campuses in the country. I can take you on a virtual tour and walk you around our location. Ahead of me, the 360 camera is mounted on a helmet worn by the videographer. 
Another practice in a 360 video shot is when the subject carries the camera using a selfie stick. This way, the subject is closer to the viewer. This is also a lot easier to shot logistically. Though, this type of moving shot either using a selfie stick or a helmet must be handled with care to avoid motion sickness. Especially if your camera does not have a stabilizer. Otherwise, keep your scene short. We've talked about how the environment is a character in 360 video. It is so important to the experience. But what if we have a situation where we don't have access to the environment for our story? Perhaps it's been destroyed and doesn't exist anymore, or it's a restricted area and we don't have permission to be there. Or even more interestingly, what if it doesn't even exist yet? How do we record a video with an interview that shows this? The first thing we could do is do the interview on a green screen. It's the same technology your local TV station uses to present the weather report. And then we substitute the green background for an environment that we create. First, we create a 360 grid. That allows us to map points on the spherical realm so that we can present the visuals. Then we can add almost anything. We could add photos. We could add video. Or even more interestingly, we could add 3D assets that we create digitally. With all of this, we're just experimenting with these techniques. It's new to us, it's new to everybody, and there are no fixed ways to do it properly, and we're still exploring, as we hope you are. We still need to get better at making people more comfortable with a 360 camera in an interview. We also need to be um, looking and aware that technology is changing so fast, sometimes month to month, that a new development would change the way that we do interviews and make it easier both for us to tell the story and for the subject to be comfortable in that situation. But we do believe that immersive media is going to have a really important impact on storytelling and we're eager to see what the future brings for that. We hope this was helpful for you as it was for us and more importantly that it sparks new ideas for you as you experiment with 360 video. Um, for now, I'm going to go look around. <laughs>